we're going to tie a dirty hippie. This is the original version, uh, sort of the OG dirty hippie. And, uh, you know, this is in the baby brown shop configuration. Um, so that, there's a look at the uh, finished product, and you'll kind of see where we're getting to. Um, what you want to sort of pay attention to is how wide this fly is. Um, we built a big wide fly that's got a large outside profile, but without a ton of material to make it heavy to cast or to slow its sink rate down. So I'm going to show you how we do that. So pull that guy out. And we're going to start with a... Uh, TMCO 5263 is what hook I've got here. And I've got a large size copper cone that I've slid onto the hook. Um, now this is not a cone head fly, but we're going to use that cone to help spread some of the materials to give it a little bit wider profile. So I'm going to start with some Danville 3-Aught Monocord. And about a third of the way back from the hook eye, a third of a shank length back from the hook eye, I'm going to start that thread and I'm going to wrap a thread base um, back to just short of the, the hook point there. And I just want to dress the shank here. And what I'm doing is creating a base to put the lead on. Um, originally on this fly I just wrapped the lead on the hook. And the problem with that is the lead as you fish um, if it's not tied down, we'll slide back. So uh, I'm now going to take some 35 thousandths lead wire. And I'm going to grab the short end, and right over that thread base, I'm going to begin to wrap. And I'm going to make about a dozen turns. Maybe 13. And I'll break that end off. And break that back end off. So we've got a nice heavy lead base and you can see when I slide that cone back up against the front of the lead, um, I've still got about a fourth anyway of the hook shank left in front and that's sort of what we want. You know, on this fly we're going to actually crowd the hook eye on purpose. Um, that's going to be part of what helps to build the fly. So now I'm going to take the thread and I'm not really trying to cover this lead but what I'm trying to do is anchor it all down. We're going to continue covering this lead uh, just with the crosshatch layer of thread just to anchor it down in place so that it doesn't move later. About like so. So now I'm going to take my thread just up off the end of the lead. So I'm just hanging on bare, bare shank at the front of the lead. I'm going to push that cone back. I'm going to pick the thread up. I'll try to do this on your side. I'm going to cross the thread to the front of the cone. I'm going to do it on my side, I guess, and get a couple turns around the hook shank, and that'll hold that cone in place. You can see the cross of the thread there across the top. And what I usually do is I'll cross back and forth a couple of times. Now, when I come back here, see how I'll come at a long angle and come around the hook? So we've got this span of thread right here. Once I've got that, I'll wrap up over it, and you can see that as I tighten that, that squares that cone up on the hook so everything's nice and straight. And I'll jump forward over the cone again and just let my thread hang there for the moment. Um, not a bad idea to put some head cement on it at this point. I use this Solarize Ultra Thin and a pretty good coat on there uh, just to lock everything down in place. I want to get all the way around. I usually do cover those crossing thread wraps. push it up inside the cone as well. Just get everything saturated there. Pick up any extra off the off the bottom. And I'll come in with my UV light and cook that up a bit. So that's now all locked down in place. We've got a nice little thin coat over the top of it, not adding a lot of bulk, just kind of smoothing things off. All right, now I'm going to take the thread and wrap all the way up to the hook eye, and then back again to the front edge of the cone. And as I said, this cone is going to act as a spreader. This is going to help to spread our material out and give us a wide profile to the fly. 
So I'm going to start with three or four strands each of, I've got gold, pearl, and copper flashaboo. And I've cut them their whole length here. And I'm going to tie these in at the center of their length, just a turn or two in front of the cone. And I'm going to pull half back onto the far side of the hook and wrap over it right up to the cone. And I'll pull the other half back and catch it. And then snug those wraps right up to the cone. And you see, you can see how that kind of spreads those out a bit. So that we've got some some width, some height to the fly. Um, and I usually leave that the whole length of the uh, of the hank of flashaboo. It just makes the material easier to handle. So now I'll take these back and clip them back in my material spring so they're back out of the way for the moment. All right, now I've got a tan marabou feather, and I want a big one. I want something with real long flues like this. And you can see this one through the center here sort of matted down, and that's because um, the companies that sell marabou these days just let it air dry. So if you take your dubbing brush and run it up the feather, like so, you can see that pulls out some of that matting, sort of cleans it up. I usually do this on my pant leg. I'll do it up here where you can see it, and you can see how that's unmatted those fibers and kind of fluff those up a bit. So now what I want to do is this big thick stem down here at the bottom. I want to get rid of most of that. So I'm going to come up on the feather and start to peel the fibers off. So that I've got gotten up to the thinner part of the stem. You can see the, the stem from there up is relatively thin. I'm actually going to go a bit further. Like so. And then I'll turn the feather over. And these feathers, you know, just like all feathers, have an inside and an outside. And the side you're looking at is the inside there. I'm going to hold the feather by the tip and create a separation point where I'm down into these longer flues. Once I've got that separation point, you can wet that tip down just a bit to make it a little easier to manage. And I'm going to tie it in just in front of this cone. Now as I do this, I'm not going to tie in right at that separation point. I'm going to overlap a bit up onto these fibers. This is going to make a more secure tie down and keep that feather from breaking so easily. So I'll tie that down and that was again with the inside of the feather toward the hook just like a regular soft tackle fly. And one little tip I can give you here is this long stem. Cut it down fairly short at that point. I'll come in and grab that tip with my hackle pliers. I'm going to stand the feather up and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to fold this just like a, a wet fly collar. So it's a marabou feather. I'm just going to treat it like a soft tackle. And what I'll do here is I'm going to sweep these fibers back. I've wet my fingers a bit. I'm going to sweep them all back to the back side of the stem. Like so. Now I'm going to begin to wrap and as I wrap I'm just putting the stem one turn in front of the other there at the front of the hook. You can see I can kind of stroke those fibers back as I go. Right up to the bare stem. And then I'll tie it off with a couple of turns there. Pull those half pliers out. Alright, once that's tied off, I'll use my dubbing brush again to sort of sweep and untangle any fibers that got wound down in there. You can see how that cone is helping to spread those marabou fibers. I'll come in and trim that stem out. Now I'm going to wet my fingers. I'm going to lift this marabou up. And hold it just above the hook. You can see how it's enveloping the top half of the cone. And then I'll start to wrap back over it right up to the front edge of the cone. And now the belly. Uh, so this is what's called Temple Fox. And you can you know, certainly use um, Arctic Fox. Um, Temple Fox is just a bit longer. It's a little nice soft fur like, like Arctic Fox, but a little longer. And for the belly on this fly, on a big size two like this, um, that extra length helps. So I'm going to draw out a clump and cut it off down close to the hide. And I'll now take this and I want to pull 
most of this under fur out of the bottom. You can see that big chunk of under fur. Get rid of that. So just got these nice long tips. And I sort of finger stack this. You know, if you get anything extra long, you can kind of pull it out. But I don't want it perfectly square. And I don't want it all the same exact length. But I want to clump about like so. Um, you can see as I measure that, and it's kind of spread out into a sheet there. As I measure that, I'm going to measure that back to the ends of the marabou here. And so I'm going to, my thread's hanging right at the front edge of the marabou. I'm going to take this and, if anything, I'll be just a little short of the end of the marabou. And kind of pinch this in place against the far side of the hook. Now I'm going to come around with a very loose turn of thread. You can see that's damn near slack. And then I'll pull up on the thread, and that will allow that to roll to the bottom. I'll get a couple turns on there. You can see that fox is now across the bottom of the fly cover in the bottom half of the cone. Again, I'll wet my fingers a bit. I'll sweep this up on either side of the hook point. And anchor it down with a few more turns. Again, right up against the front edge of the cone. I'll pull these butt ends down. And you want to push your thread out of the way. You can see how I'm doing that there with my middle finger. And trim those, those butts out. And again, you can use the use the brush to sort of part everything back. So we've got that nice two-tone top and bottom color there. All right, now we're going to start to work on the on the head. And what I want to do here is bump my thread forward. We've got a little thread head um, kind of built up. I'll just smooth that off, and then I'm going to bump my thread just in front of it, where I'm back down onto the bare part of the hook shank. Now I'm going to reposition the the camera here so that you can get a little closer view of the head end of the fly because uh, we're going to extend a little bit off the hook eye here. All right, we've got that repositioned. I'm just going to kind of sweep everything back again. And this is where we're going to come in to put the collar on. And again, that thread's hanging just in front of that uh, thread head that we sort of built tying the wing in. And I'm going to come in with some tan Arctic Fox fur. And this comes on a, on a zonker strip, basically. You can see a strip of leather there. So it's like a lot like a rabbit strip. But what I want to do is take a nice size clump here and sort of even the tips up so that I've got a nice little bundle and then I'll cut it off the hide. So I've got a nice little little tuft of that Arctic Fox. Now what I'll do with this, again, I don't worry too much about the, the under fur and the butt ends on this because most of that's going to get cut off. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this sheet and my thread's hanging there at the front end and I'm going to fold it around the hook. You can see those tips go about halfway up the wing. I'm going to hold that in place, and again, with that same move, big loose turn, and I'm going to tighten up, tighten by pulling the thread up. And I should be cinching that down, there we go, just in front of that nub from where we tied the wing down. You can see how that'll distribute the hair. Get one more turn on there, all the way around the hook. It's always good to take a look all the way around, make sure it did go all the way around. Pretty happy there, that looks pretty good. So now I'm going to cut the butt ends off, and this is usually two cuts to do this. So I'm going to lift the top half and just kind of sneak my scissor tips in there as close as I can and trim that out. Then I'll pull the bottom half down and again push my thread out of the way. The very tips of my scissors here and cut that out at the front. You can see I'm jammed right up to the hook eye, which is on purpose. That's that's the whole idea. You can see how the fly is gaining height and, and depth here. So I'll sweep this back. I'm going to anchor that down good and tight and bring the thread right up to the back edge of the hook eye. And now we're going to put the, the face on this. And what this is is tan UV ice stubbing. So I've got a clump of it here, and I'm going to take and sort of align it. You can see I'll just pull it apart and restack it. And what I want to do here is, you can see as I pull it apart, let's say that those fibers are, are two inches long, or an inch long. Um, you can see when I pull it apart there, I'm going to restack, and then I'll pull almost apart. So I've got it overlapping. And the idea there is that I've got the centers 
of that clump overlapping. That's what I'm going to tie down so I can get a little extra length out of it. So once I've got that, I'm going to take that sheet and treat it the same way that I did the, the fox fur. I'm going to fold it around the hook. And just behind the eye here, I'm going to come with that loose turn and catch it. You can see how that's kind of coming over the top of the fly. It's a pretty sparse little collar. And it's really just to add some flash. And that's why I use on all the colors, no matter what color hippie I tie, I, I use this tan, tan UV ice dubbing because of the UV part of it. Um, that's going to be the highlights that I'm going after. So now this front end, I'm going to take my thumb and index finger of my thread hand and just push this back. And you can sort of distribute it a bit so you get a little bit better distribution around the hook. And I'm going to jump the thread to just behind the hook eye. Now, as I do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a thread dam behind the hook eye. I'm not going to wrap back up over this dubbing. I'm just going to build a thread head at its front edge. And I want to pull those wraps down good and tight there. And what that'll do is force all of that back into a nice little top layer. I'll come in with my whip finisher. Finish off the thread head, and then I'll cut out my thread. So that's the tie-in part. So now I'm going to come back in with that dubbing brush, and I'm going to sweep all of that UVI stubbing back around. And you can see it's just adding a bit of highlight. It's not a really thick, heavy, heavy layer. It's just some flash, and you'll see on the finish fly, um, it's really pretty subtle. But you can see how that pretty sparse all the way around. All right, now we're to the fun part. I'm gonna take a uh, Prismacolor marker in sepia, and I'm gonna use the white end. And I'm gonna start up here at the head. I'm gonna kind of pinch the, the body of the fly together. And I'm gonna start just behind the hook. I'm gonna create bands coming up the top half of that collar over that flash right up to the end of the fur. So I just did that on this near side. Now I'm going to do the far side and I obviously try to make sure that those lines line up top to bottom. Like so. Now I'll grab all of that marabou and I'll continue barring right up to the ends of the marabou. And the, the marker won't bleed all the way through the marabou, so you've got to go at it from both sides. And you can do a, a few narrow bands or a bunch of narrow bands or a few wide bands. You can sort of control how much of that you put on at a time, but I do want to make sure that I get that all the way across all the way around that marabou. And you can certainly use barred marabou. Um, you know, the, the prepackaged, pre pre barred marabou. Um, the reason I like to do it with the markers, I can kind of control how many bars, what color they are, where they go. Now one last thing before I put this marker away, so I'm going to sweep the top of the head back and I'll use the broad part of the tip. And I want to color the top of the head all the way down to the thread head. Make a dark surface there, right across the top. Like so. And that's really essentially just over the flash. Some of it might work down into that fox, but it's just to darken the top half of the fly. Now I'm going to use a uh, an orange sepia, or I'm sorry, an orange Prismacolor marker. And again with the white end, I'm just going to sort of highlight the bottom edge of the cheeks here. So I'll sweep that back and just brush the marker back over that. I'm really just trying to hit the, the flash as much as I can all the way around the bottom half. Just sort of blush the cheeks here. So we've just got a bit of a, an orange highlight there. About like so. Um, and then once that has dried for a few seconds, I'll take my, my brush back through it and that'll separate anything that was matted down and sort of soften those bars that we built in there. 
you can see how I'm just sort of sweeping everything back and loosening those fibers up. So there's our front silhouette. All right, now the eyes. Um, the eyes are quarter inch gold holographic dome eyes. And to glue them on, I'm going to use a product called Tear Mender. Um, Tear Mender is a, a latex adhesive, and it is the best stuff I've found for attaching these eyes. So I'm going to take a long bodkin here, and I'm going to dip it in the Tear Mender. And mine's fairly goopy. It's uh, dried out a bit, and I've actually left the lid off of it on purpose so that it will do that. It's pretty goopy. I'm going to turn the fly up, and I kind of feel with my fingers here where the front of the cone is. And I'll put my needle down right at the front edge of that cone and just let that drop sort of bleed in. And I'm going to do that same thing on my near side. And then I'm going to take the lid and put it back on the tear mender. Because if you spill this stuff, it makes a huge mess. All right, so we've got a little gob of glue on both sides, you know, equally placed. I'm going to take one of these dome eyes and press it in here along the near side, like so, right on top of that glue. And then I'll take the other eye and put it here on the far side. And you can see there's some, some glue that's still sticking out. Um, don't sweat that. That actually comes out pretty easily. So now I take my fingers from the front and I can kind of gauge where those eyes are and I can feel that that far eye is just a little further forward than I want it to be. So I'll just slide it back, get those two eyes aligned, and then I sort of pinch the fly together. And again, this is going to help to build some height. So I'm essentially gluing the eyes um, almost to each other across the center of the hook shank, right at the front edge of the cone. Now for the flash that's hanging out the tail end, what I do with this is I'll hold the fly hook eye up and I'm going to come in from the ends and I want to trim this flash just a, a bit proud of the marabou uh, but not all to the same length. You can see I'll turn the fly and sort of nip away at it so that they've got kind of ragged ends there. I'll sweep that fur up and get him put back in the vise for you. All right, so now you can get a, a better overall view of the, the finished fly with the whole thing on the screen. Sweep everything back. You can see that cone from all dimensions sort of adds body to the fly. Sweep everything back and that belly down along the bottom. And see how that all fits together. And one last little shot of head cement here on the thread head, and we're done. Um, this fly is a... Uh, you know, baby brown trout imitation it imitates a baby brown. Um, it's one of the most effective color combinations that I've used on any of my streamers, this sort of tan cream color. Put a little solar is on there. Cook them up there on the front end. And that's the dirty hippie named after my wonderful wife, Lisa. Um, with all that marabou and fox on there, it's a really uh, lively, lively pattern and water swims really nicely. Um, sinks well, casts super easy, casts like a bullet. Everything sort of slims down and kind of get, as I sweep that all back, kind of get what we're shooting for there for outside profile. Pretty bait fishy little pattern. And tied in brown, rainbow. There's a Platte River version, there's an all black version. Um, you know, if you're going to have a streamer, you should have a black version as well. But um, this is my primary. This is the brown trout, dirty hippie. Hope you enjoyed watching. Tune in, there will always be some more coming. You guys take care.